let's talk about React Context Performance. Somewhere at the top of the tree, you have a provider component where you're passing in a context value that will be available lower down the tree for some component that's a descendant of this component to consume. It may be many levels down and you don't want to pass it as props. So in some component, we're going to render a provider and pass a value with our local state. And this component we're writing, let's just call it the state manager component. So up here we have a state manager component. Uh, I know you can't quite see that, but we have a state manager component and it renders a provider and it passes its local state as the provider value. And then let's just say we have a huge React tree here where I, I drew dot, dot, dot. And then somewhere further down the tree, you render the context consumer component. Now the context consumer component is a function as a child or render prop type API where you pass in a child that is a function. So it looks like this. You put a JSX curly brace and then an ECMAScript 6 function takes in the value as the argument, which is the context value provided further up the tree. And then you render something, whatever you want. We'll just say my thingy. So it's some component and it takes in the value. So that's basically how context works. It's kind of like a portal where you can put a value in at the top of the tree and then get it somewhere down lower in the tree without having to explicitly pass it each level all the way down. So if this state manager up here updates its state, this value function here will rerun and it will re-render the my thingy component with a new value object. Every time we change the state on the state manager, this will happen. The consumers down further down the tree will rerun their render prop function and it will re-render all of their children. So what happens if you have a context value that is an object like this? This is your state manager's state that gets put on the context value. And it has a property called foo that's true and bar that's false. So it's an object with two Boolean properties. And let's say further down the tree, you have two components, component A and B. And component A takes in a prop called val, which is the whole value from the consumer. And then component B takes in a prop called foo. And let's just say we have have access to the foo property from the value. So that was received from value.foo. So what's going to happen when, let's say, we change bar on the context? Well, that whole object is not going to be the same, right? The old object and the new object are not equal. So this value here is a new object. Component A, therefore, would re-render with a new object. Component B, however, is only taking in foo as a prop. Now, it would normally update, but if it's a pure component, it would bail out of updates if the props are the same. And since true is equal to true, this component would not update. As long as it's wrapped in react.memo or extends react.peer component, it's memoized, meaning it does not re-render if the props are shallow equal. In this case, true is e shallow equal to true. So how can we create an API on top of React that lets us take advantage of this for better performance? In Redux, you have a map state to props. Well, we could create a map value to props function. And that's a function that takes in the context value and then returns an object that we're going to spread into the props of our component. So this object represents the props that our component A and component B would actually consume from the context. So here I want to consume foo. I want a prop called foo and it's going to come from the context value.foo. And then you could select whatever other properties you want from the context value. So we're just going to slice off the subset of the context value that we actually need for each component. And each component would create a map value to props function just like you would in Redux with map state to props. So let's consider what that would look like. So in our context consumer, we have this value function where it passes in the value and we're supposed to render whatever we want. So we could create a const props. And props is equal to the return value of calling our map value to props function and passing in the context value. So once again, that function slices off just the object 
that represents the subset of the value we want as the props for our actual component. So that's going to return a partial value, if you will. And then down here, we would return your component that's actually consuming the value. In this case, my thingy is the name of the component. And we would do a JSX spread of the props object here, which basically takes each key in that object and supplies it as a prop with the equivalent name. So if our map value to props only returns an object with the property foo, then my thingy will only receive a prop called foo. So down here, my thingy is assumed to be a component that's been wrapped in react.memo before we render it. That makes it a peer component, where if the props have not changed before and after, then it will not re-render. It'll bail out of re-rendering, and that's a major performance optimization if there's a lot of components down the tree from my thingy that we avoid re-rendering. So up here, props is, once again, a subset of the context value. It's a slice of the state from our state manager up the tree.